Lil Nas X Clapback Champ. And you can see already from the start of this article that the author, whoever wrote this article, let's see who wrote it, John Caramanica. So John, as we will call him through the rest of the video, uh, says a lot of things that make absolutely no sense in this article. But you can see it says the rapper's new single, video and sneaker were merely the prelude to a brilliantly orchestrated main event. A virtuosic performance on Twitter. Yes, that is the peak of human intellect, is people insulting each other like children on Twitter. Yes, I think that is absolutely the peak of where we should be as human beings. One after another, they came with venom for Lil Nas X, Candace Owens, and various other right-wing Twitter personalities. Greg Locke, a Tennessee pastor, Fox News, and Nike. So here you see that this author is immediately poisoning the well. Poisoning the well is an extremely dishonest tactic where you say basically uh, you attack your opponent before you even get into why they made a mistake. He immediately calls all these people right-wing personalities even though we don't necessarily know whether or not all of these people are necessarily right wing. He just wants to tarnish all these people with a label so that he can then dismiss them. They were clueless, blissful almost, lambs blind to the slaughter they were hurtling towards. Now this is uh, sadly ironic in the sense that lambs being led to the slaughter is actually something that really does apply to Lil Nas, since he is sinning, he is in open rebellion to Christ, and he is going to be slaughtered because of his disobedience, and this is something that is very sad. Yet he makes a joke out of it. Unfortunately, the irony is probably lost on him. The 21-year-old rapper and digital prodigy, prodigy or one-hit wonder, uh, one of the two, has been using his Twitter account as a fly swatter, flattening one irritant after the next in a loud and uproarious display of internet speed celebrity. After Noam tweeted about his Satan shoes, he groaned, you're a whole governor and you on here tweeting about some blank shoes? Do your job. Obviously, this isn't an ad hominem attack, has nothing to do with her criticism. He also provides no evidence for the assertion that she's not doing her job, therefore this is just playground insults. Is this article really just playground insults? Lucas suggested that Montero video might not be appropriate for children, and Lil Nas X eye rolled back, I literally sing about lean and adultery in Old Town Road. You decided to let your children listen. Blame yourself. As this article says, he eye-rolled. That's a classic uh, example of a tantrum from a child. And it seems that both Lil Nas and John, who wrote this article, both seem to uh, find pleasure in giving tantrums. Uh, but that's not what we're going to do today. He says, you decide to let your children listen. Blame yourself. And I would say he is partially correct here because parents, I'm not a parent, but if you're a parent and you, especially if you have young children who aren't necessarily mature enough to handle adult subjects like drugs and adultery, maybe watch what they listen to, watch what they're watching, watch what they're learning in school because evil people like Lil Nas will be slipping in wicked messages uh, into songs that children will listen to. And the idea that Lil Nas can just push all the blame onto parents not paying attention, that's foolish. That he has specifically targeted children as his target audience, so he should blame himself. This is like someone who gives drugs to a little children and says to the parents, you should have been watching him more carefully. It's not wrong for me to give drugs to your little kid. It's wrong for you not to make sure I don't do that. Well, how about this? How about parents pay attention to what their kids do, and how about you don't do evil things? You know you can do both. You can have parents watch, and you can actually be a positive influence for people. In between target practice, Lil Nas X was reflective too. I spent my entire teenage years hating myself 
because of what Christianity taught about homosexuality. So I hope you are mad. Stay mad. Feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. Now, I don't know Lil Nas and his specific story. I don't know what people said to him within the church. But one thing that we can see here is telling somebody that there are consequences, namely hell, is not the same thing as telling people to hate themselves. That is not what Christianity has ever taught. Christians have always argued that homosexuality is a sin. The Christians have also always argued that we are all sinners. Both of those things are true. We are all guilty. We all have things that we need to let go of when we become Christians. And some of us have more difficult things to let go of than others. In fact, letting go of your homosexual desires, choosing not to engage in them, that is something that I have not experienced, and it is something that I can only imagine would be incredibly difficult. Yet Lil Nas chose not to do that. Uh, so he is justly condemned for his sin. He says, so I hope you are mad. Stay mad. Feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. You can see here he reveals himself that he released this entire music video, the Satan shoes. He released all of it just to make people mad. He used it to create controversy. This is an artificial controversy. So we as Christians, we don't want to play into his hand. We don't want to play the game he's playing. We don't need to feel all outraged and butthurt about uh, getting attacked, uh, about him uh, hating Christianity. We knew that people in the world would act like this. What Montero has caused, or rather what Lil Nas has engineered, is a good old-fashioned moral panic. What do you mean moral panic? Us saying that he's doing evil things is not moral panic. We don't need to be panicked as Christians. Or at least the performance of one. So now, John is attacking everybody who has a problem with Satan's shoes and giving Satan a lap dance. All of these people, they're just pretending. They're pretending to be outraged. Which, uh, that is just a low blow. Why would you go there? Uh, that's a stupid thing to say. Uh, the sort of thing that largely that had been largely left behind in the 1980s. So now he's trying to tarnish all people who criticize this video as they're just living in the past. They're, they need to get with the culture. Well, we as Christians, we're not commanded to get with the culture. We as Christians are commanded to not embrace the culture. The song, the video, the shoes, they are bait. He's, he's right. This is bait. On the other hand, this is increasing the polarization. So this author, uh, John, wants to complain about polarization in our culture, yet he is uplifting the very cause, the thing that he admits is the cause of the polarization. Seems John has some misplaced ideas here that sort of conflict with one another. And Montero anticipates the kerfuffles it would cause. The true art here isn't the music. That said, it's one of Lil Nas X's better songs. I've only listened to one, so I cannot actually confirm or deny that statement. Or the video, more on that below, it's effortlessness, the ease, the joy of his reactions to the reactions. It's the sense that he's playing chess to everyone else's lame checkers moves. This is like when people would call Trump a genius visionary when he just gave somebody a playground insult. It's not what's happening here. Uh, this man isn't a genius. He hasn't done anything ingenious. He isn't playing some sort of 4D chess. Um, he's just doing playground insults, run-of-the-mill insults. Uh, this isn't anything special that we're getting from him. No intellectual uh, defeats. Uh, we're not seeing this. Um, maybe we'll see some of that later in the article, but we've not seen any of that so far. Uh, so let's move on. He is simply faster, funnier, and on firmer, more principled ground than his adversaries, who are at best comically flimsy. Principled ground. 
I don't think Lil Nas is on principled ground when he specifically uh, lures children into uh, using lean, into adultery, into other sexual sins. The idea that uh, he is the arbiter of moral principle is laughable here. He goes on, no famous person is as adept. No one, no famous person. There's no one out there who's as clever, as ingenious, as beautiful. Man, this guy, he really has a thing for Lil Nas. Uh, no famous person is as adept as Lil Nas as at casually but thoroughly smacking down the ream of Twitter churls inevitably awakened by something like this. Maybe Cardi B or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Really? Okay. Uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, another grand master of 40 chess. He is a grade A internet manipulator. Oh, so you're calling him a manipulator and you think this is a good thing. I'm starting to think this John guy just calls all of the terrible things about Lil Nas and he tries to frame them as compliments. Provided all the tools and resources typically reserved for long-established pop superstars, he is perfectly suited to dominate the moment. That's right, it is a moment, uh, his moment in the spotlight. You know that this was released during Holy Week in order to start controversy. The entire point of this song is to ignite controversy, which gets more people to hear about the song, which gets more people to click on the song, and gets more people to buy the song. This is a marketing move. Don't play this off as some moral endeavor. He's just trying to make money here. All of it is memorable, not simply because of the expert skill on display, but because it's clear that Lil Nas is not simply the performer of Montero, nor simply the star of its video, nor simply the inspiration for a sneaker. He is the conductor of a symphony of thousands, maybe even millions. It's Lil Nas X's conversation, and we're all just talking in it. Wow, that's powerful. I'm... I feel the the impact right there, man. It's not like this guy has a real thing for Lil Nas X and he's worshiping Lil Nas as if every minor thing that he does is, oh, good job, he, he picked up a pencil. Like, man, that's great. Okay, man, he, he gave an insult. That was like the most clever thing in the history of insults. In fact, he's the most clever celebrity ever. And like, no one could have predicted this. He is a visionary. He plays 40 chess when you're just playing checkers. In fact, you're just playing dominoes and he is knocking you over. I guess I've been owned by Lil Nas and the very fact that I'm talking about this. Man, he is, he is just a genius. No one, no one could have figured out that mocking Christianity right before Easter would get people talking. That's like a genius move. No one could have figured that out before him. Now, obviously, this person in this article is castrating himself before uh, the idol of Lil Nas, but I think it is important uh, to understand that people in this conversation are not willing to listen to reason a lot of the time. They simply want to get out their points, and anything that their side does, however little, however uh, foolish, whether it's foolish or wise, they don't care. If it's a point scored for their own side, they're willing to clap it along as if it's a genius move. I think this is something that we should understand as Christians, the world is never going to be our friend. They are always going to celebrate as Christianity is mocked, and they are going to celebrate as Christianity, uh, everything that Christianity stands for, is thoroughly uh, disapproved of, disavowed in the public space. This is the world that we live in as Christians. We must understand that this is the air that we breathe in the culture that we live in. So if you like this video, definitely hit the like button. That would help me so much. Uh, just signal to YouTube that this is a video that uh, you enjoyed and you may enjoy the next video. So until next time, uh, subscribe to Mike Winger's channel. 
Uh, I am not affiliated with Mike Winger, but we're trying to get him to a million subscribers. So definitely go subscribe to him. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, farewell.